anyway then guys long breath of vlog time but all kinds of problems what happened was I, uh, I was riding it a bit hard I mean I was jokingly putting it down to uh, all the power but what actually happened was I've uh, broken a tooth on the third gear of the pacemaker box so that's pretty gutting I've had to swap the gearbox I've had to get a new gearbox and I fit it like uh, well I got it done yesterday so this is the first time I've sort of been out on it so I'm trying to go steady I'm about 10 minutes into it so I'm slightly more confident than I was a bit ago but anything could happen just yet uh, so it's a straight LI 150 gearbox this time instead of a pacemaker because I would just it'd be too hard to find and it's failed last time but Whilst I say, um, you know, it's like a weak type and a strong type of pacemaker gearbox, if you know about gearboxes a little bit. Um, and I checked it, and it was checked, and it was the stronger type. So it's not a case of, like, the power has done it, in all honesty. It's just my poor gear change technique, I guess. I've just clunked it, given it way too much, and clunked it in and uh, knackered it. So, pretty gutted. So it's taken a bit of doing to, uh, to get a new one in. I did it all myself, but with some help off John. I was going to concede John over there, but he's not in, so I can't do that. So I might as well just go for a quick spin. So, I don't know, differences between this gearbox and the pacemaker. I mean, it seems... I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, it's hard to tell. It pulls differently completely. I was going to change the front sprocket down to a 17. I was on an 18 before. I was going to go down to an 18, uh, 17. But I decided just not to bother because I just couldn't be bothered at that point. I changed everything else when I were in there though, so I suppose you could, you know, sort of a good thing. It were, uh, all that happened where I broke a tooth on the uh, thing, everything else was sort of alright. But when I've looked inside the engine, taken the engine case off, I didn't do vids of this by the way, because it's just way too involved and my hands are covered in oil when I'm doing this stuff, so... Uh, if you want to watch vids about that, by the way, there is, um, like, is Kickback Garage doing them? Is it, uh, I think he does Steel Weasel? I think you mentioned me, dude, on one of the other vids. Somebody told me, so shout out to you. Thanks a lot. Steel Weasel and uh, someone else. Well, yeah, when I were in there, the, um, the uh, clutch basket were all, like, really loose. To be honest, it all felt a bit like moving around a lot. I thought, this seems a bit sus, does this, to me? So I um, took that, uh, I took it all to bits and I replaced everything basically. I took the gearbox out, replaced the main drive bearing and seal. Uh, God, I hope I remember to put that seal in. <laughs> Why did I need that seal? Oh no, I didn't need the seal because it was a seal bearing. Um, did the gearbox end plates, uh, roller bearing, you know, the needle bearing you might call it, but I'd call it a roller bearing. And the, um, the big one in the end plate, you know, the Christmas tree one, and, uh, the brass clutch bush at the same time. So that were good. It was, it's always good to replace that stuff. Is my sort of thinking and what I've always sort of been taught that if you're going as far as getting your eyes on the, uh, you know, you've got eyes on the bloody main bearing, you might as well swap it whilst you're in there. Because if it fails a hundred or even a thousand miles down the road, you just be like, oh, we're only just then. I could have changed that. So just get it changed. Is what I did. So it costs a bit more money, but whatever. So yeah, what we're on about with the clutch, you were pulling a bit off centre pulling a bit on the lips it was not running through with the rear and front sprocket or I thought it won't but turns out it was more to do with the fact that it was just moving left and right rather than one being offset to the other sort of going like that so it were um, a case of well I thought I'd have to shim it out but when I spotted to John look at this guy going for it not a good move not a good move I would have said but anyway um, leaving to it it's like going for it now you wouldn't do it would you probably will on this next bit which is fair enough if it's clear but let's see there's obviously going for it but I'm not doing that plus if I got enough speed up to get past that lot the brakes wouldn't stop me when I got to the bottom <laughs> uh, and I've just rebuilt gearbox so anyway like I was saying so because it was pulling a bit on piss rather than being over here it was pulling on piss it was wearing away at one side of the chain more than the other 
So I just, I just put a new chain on and corrected the problem at the back, hopefully. But I'll, I'll inspect that in a bit, because after a, a, I don't know, 100 miles or so, hopefully if I can do that, then I'll uh, take it all to bits and tighten up everything that I've sort of done previously. So that were good to replace everything at that time. Uh, it seemed all to be okay at the time, and it all went together like it should. Bit of a hiccup when I put the, uh, the sliding dog thing, you know, the cursor. Oh, sorry, thanks guys. I put the cursor the wrong way up on the lay shaft, and then I was trying to put lay shaft in for about 20 minutes, just like getting really annoyed, when I'm sure I can know how to do this. I know how to do this. So I put the gearbox in in the first place. Well, I copied something that somebody had built for me, but do you know what I mean? So once I turned that round, it went straight in. I thought, nice one. A uh, bit close to that car, as usual. <laughs> Shout out to Steve Baker for that one. <laughs> Look, I'm a bit close to this car, aren't I, Steve? Like always, mate. Hope you're all right out there, dude. I mean, once it gets up to speed, it pulls like hell, but it's towing a bit, wee. It's towing a bit up that bit there where the pacemaker didn't do that, so what? whatever configuration the pacemaker was, well, I don't know, it's what I've been for eight years, put it that way, eight or nine years I've been on that on that gearbox. Look at that, non-handed. So what I'm going to do now really is just take this home because uh, I've not really got anywhere to go and it's Friday afternoon and I'm supposed to be doing other stuff. But it slips into gear nice and easily, slips back into neutral nice and easily, pulls through gears, Selects every gear, up and down, no clunking, no mad noises, no grinding, no so. As long as uh, it stays together and doesn't drop to bits now, I'm calling it a job. But no, I'm, uh, I think I'm happy with it, boys, to be honest. So, yeah, shout out to everyone, all of you. I can't remember, it's just been ages and ages as usual. I went to be going to Kendall today, it's Kendall Scooter Rally day today. But, uh, you know, I spent all my money on Lambretta. Um, gearboxes and bearings. Well, a gearbox and a load of bearings, so. Anyway, so I'm just gonna go and get my shorts on. Right then, boys. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in a bit.